Tony Carini, voice of West Virginia Athletics, and what a win for the Mountaineers against Pittsburgh, the rivalry, the backyard brawl, but also a critical win for the program. And Neil Brown, Tony joins us on 365 Sports. Uh, we had Phil Bennett on yesterday who was at Pittsburgh for three years. He discussed that rivalry and how bitter it can be. What is it like, no matter the situation of needing the win, What was it? what is it like, Tony, when they just beat Pitt? Oh, it is a can it's an absolute sigh of relief across the state of West Virginia. You got to remember, you know, because West Virginia does not have any professional teams, this is 55 counties in the state and all 55 counties and the folks from there are focused on this game. And so when you get the victory, it's huge. It lasts obviously for the minimum of a year and uh, it was a great relief. And then you throw into the fact that, you know, because of the situation uh, that we have this season, you know, that was a massive win biggest game that Neil Brown has coached at West Virginia was this past Saturday. They were able to get through it despite the fact that they lose their starting quarterback just six plays in. So, Tony, how much does that buoy Neil Brown moving forward? I mean, obviously he's got to win most of the rest of them to, to make people convinced that he's turning it in the right direction. But just being the biggest rival alone, does that give people the sigh of relief? Yes, and I think that, to answer your question, Paul, if, if it hadn't happened, then I think that could have been a massive mark uh, against him going forward. I think what Saturday did was keep everything in play. Uh, we're in a rare, in a rare three-game homestand right now, which culminates on Saturday when Texas Tech comes in. And I thought all along – that you had to win these three games uh, before you go out on the road because you're going to have TCU and then you're going to have an off week and then you got to go to Houston. So you're going to have back-to-back road games. I really think that, you know, it's it's really important. It's not must, but it's really important, I think, to have a good season to go 3-1 and one before you go back out onto the road. Tony, so Garrett Green gets banged up uh, early on in that game and uh, you know, this was not a pretty offensive game by any means for for either team, but Nico Marchio comes in there and gets some uh, gets some uh, time. What were your thoughts on, you know, just that situation to begin with with Garrett Green, but also what you saw from uh, Nico Marchio and, and what they can expect moving forward? Well, knowing the significance of the game, to see him go down, actually he got hurt the fifth play. He stayed on the field, handed the ball off, and then went down in a heap on the sixth play. So knowing what was at stake to see that happen, it was like, this isn't happening. And so that was bad because Nico um, just hadn't been into that type of a situation. He played against Oak State last year, but it was in a complete rainstorm. But here you have, you know, this massively important game. But I watched Nico in practice in the, in the August month, and I watched him in scrimmages. He has it. He has the ability. Um, they didn't do anything with him during the game because they just wanted to be careful um, not to try to overwhelm him. So they reduced the play sheet. As you guys saw, it became a 1977 or a 1980 <laughs> football game, right? Yep. Um, when games were 17 to 14 and 17 to 10. And Neil just kind of saw Pitt's struggles on offense, their inability to move the ball. And he said, okay, get the lead, get the ball, run the ball. And that was just old school football. It probably brought a smile to the face of our former coach, Don Nealon, because that's how he used to win games. And so I think this week, uh, with a full week of practice for Nico, if in fact Garrett isn't going to be able to go, they will widen the playbook out. And I do think he's got abilities. The only thing he does lack is experience. He can he can throw the ball. He's a hard nosed kid. You guys probably have seen. You know he was highly recruited uh, with big boy offers, and so it's there for him. It's just a matter of getting comfortable. But once he gets a rhythm, he'll stroke the ball downfield. He'll be fine. Tony, you mentioned the importance of the win. Obviously, the rivalry too. They have Tech. Do they know exactly what they're going to get from Tech? Do you know? Can, did they, they, you know, they played well against Oregon, but they had the disappointing ending against Wyoming. Yeah. And then next last week against Tarleton, they're going to blow them out. Uh, it, it, they're going to throw the ball all over the place, right? Yeah. So this has been a really weird series. So this is West Virginia's twelfth year in the league, and West Virginia lost the first two to the Red Raiders when they got into the league, and then they won five in a row. And then they've lost four in a row. And two of the games were close, and two of the games were blowouts. And among all of the teams that West Virginia plays, 
Texas Tech is the one that makes Neil Brown scratch his head because for the life of him, after they lost um, the first go round in Morgantown, thirty-eight to seventeen, this was a nineteen. He thought, well, the next year uh, they're going to come out and they're going to ball, and they went to Lubbock and they get beat thirty-four twenty-seven on a late fumble that got picked up and returned. And so then they come back to Morgantown in twenty-one tight game, but the Red Raiders went at 23-20, so it sets the scene. Okay, now you got revenge on your side next year. They go to Lubbock last year and get absolutely worst performance of the year, just boat raced 48-10. to So, this one has bummed him out, and they have worked, he said yesterday, we've worked since the winter, uh, figuring out how to slow these cats down, because as you guys know, uh, they play really super fast. One of West Virginia's keys so far this season is they literally have been making almost like hockey line substitutions on defense. They've been changing out four and five at a time to keep their D-line fresh. Believe it or not, guys, they're playing 10 defensive linemen and they're rotating them. But you also know that if an offense doesn't make a substitution, the defense can't. And so that's one of the big keys this week is to try to find a way to slow these guys down. It's something that has perplexed them in the most recent meetings. Tony, um, Three and one heading out of this, you said that that's that's where they have to be. How confident? Yeah, do you think- so that's where that's where that's where Tony would like <laughs> them. Would like them to be. If they have to be, that's where Tony would like them to be. Like them to be. So they're three and one heading out of this, and then you look at what's happened down the line to the to some of the teams. You know, Houston struggling moderately with their roster. Oklahoma State doesn't know who their quarterback's going to be. Do you think right. the outlook has changed for a lot of fans, even if they are say two and two heading out uh, down the line of the Big Twelve? Yes, Paul, I do. I do. I, I, I This kind of surprises me what we've seen um, so far from some of these results. I mean, the Oklahoma State game, um, and they have to come here uh, in October, makes you scratch your head, uh, among some others. So, yeah, I do think that um, it sets up nicely for what West Virginia needs to do uh, to take another step, uh, for Neil to be retained. Uh, I think it does, uh, to be quite honest with you. Uh, but, again, I would like to be 3-1. and one. Uh, going back out there, but I think there are opportunities here. And, you know, uh, you just don't know other injuries. You know, you see it every week. Unfortunately, it's not a matter of if a team is going to suffer through injuries. It's a matter of just when and who it's going to be. So you keep your fingers crossed that you can stay as healthy as possible. But, yeah, I think there are wins uh, on this schedule. Uh, as Neil said at Media Day, guys, and you were there and we talked that day, uh, one of the first things he said was we're not going to finish 14th. We were picked 14th, and I, I think yep. that can be a realistic thing. Yeah, he was he was pretty emphatic and kind of in an angry mood about a, a few things, I think, because he felt like they were so disrespected. If you look at the conference, Paul kind of brought this up. Iowa State lost their quarterback before the year began, although the other guy uh, was also in a battle with him. Kansas State, it looks like Will Howard, who was a very much almost – like limping badly in the loss in Missouri. Baylor lost Shapin for a, a, another week or two. You'd mentioned uh, West Virginia's injury, and then Oklahoma State, I don't know if they know who their quarterback is. It really is. It's already the attrition, and we're only three weeks into the season. I know. I know. It, it has been kind of crazy. You're right. We haven't even got into the meat um, yet of the schedule. And I mean, you guys know this. Uh, sometimes teams have seasons – uh, where they just get crushed by injuries and it just never materializes for them. And then at the other time, uh, you have seasons uh, where a team stays particularly healthy and, mm-hmm. and that's, uh, that's their advantage. And so you just you just never know. That's why a lot of times those preseason predictions, uh, they maybe are just preseason guesses because you're just not sure where and when folks are going to get hurt. Tony Caridi, voice of West Virginia Athletics, with us after a critical win against Pitt. Tony, thank you very much for your time and good luck with Tech Uh, with West Virginia Tech this weekend with the broadcast. Hey, can I make a request? Yeah. Yeah, next time I come on, so you guys keep using that picture of me on your box. I'm watching it on YouTube right now. Um, It's a a winter. You got me me with a winter jacket. I mean, can can they like, can I have a seasonal? Like I come in, I come in like September. It's more fall, maybe a light vest. Sure. And then is the season like November. Can I get a winter coat? And then that kind of a thing. But look at the picture now on the screen. I don't know if it's changed Dazzling, yet. huh? There you yeah, go. Yeah, there you go. There you do go. You, do you have a calendar shoot that we could maybe use? <laughs> sure, yeah. I, can, I, yeah. I can get you. i tell you what. The nice thing about that suit that I'm wearing there is I had to return that by 11 the next day, and I was able to get that back. <laughs> I don't want to hang up on this without congratulating you on the Hall of Fame. 
That that I saw Thank the note you. about that. That's amazing. That, that that says a lot for what you've done with the school, but also how you do it. Congratulations on that. Thanks so much, guys. Always fun to be with you. I appreciate you it. Tony Caridi, voice of West Virginia Athletics with us on 365.